Ladies and gentlemen, now today we are going to be doing a full breakdown of the brand new Thanos boss fight for Avengers Endgame, the uncollected nameless Thanos. We're going to be having a look at all three of the phases, breaking down all of his mechanics and talking about some of the best champions, the best counters, certain ways that you can like cheese stuff a little bit and uh, also just all of the tips and tricks that I have. Also, before we start, and a good expectation to have before going into this fight is that this Thanos is really, really difficult in comparison to a lot of the other stuff in the game. If we have a look at stuff in like Act 6 and Variant, pretty much all of the bosses, I can't really think of a boss that's like more tricky to fight than this Thanos in Act 6 and Variant, and uh, there are better rewards, especially when it comes to Variant. So if you do go into this boss fight, get absolutely ruined, you know, it takes you a while to learn, uh, don't feel discouraged because you've got like six weeks to fight this dude and kind of learn and get good uh, but just bear in mind that comparatively speaking this is one of the hardest challenges that we've ever had in Marvel Contest of Champions especially the last phase of this boss it really does suck big time but anyway let's start breaking down the phases the brand new Thanos boss has three very unique phases so the first one begins at 95% health kind of above that for the first five percent you've just kind of got three beats on him uh, so that is phase one and last from 95% all the way down to 65% there where you enter phase two and that's going to last till 30% and then 30% till death is phase three. During these phases, all of Thanos' special attacks cost only one bar of power to activate, and he will only activate a special attack when reaching his current maximum power. So, phase one, he's only going to use his special one. Phase two, he's only going to use his special two. And phase three, he's only going to use his special three. And also, it's important to note that you can't power lock or power drain Thanos. Now, for the very first phase, uh, from 95 to 65%, you've got Primeval cocoon so during this phase as soon as he activates it he gains a buff called primeval cocoon and this is going to reflect all damage and stuns back at the attacker so while he has this buff you cannot parry him but you can remove this buff by striking him with either a heavy or a special attack uh, but also while primeval cocoon is active if the attacker strikes Thanos's block it grants them power as if it were a hit so you basically need either champions that can power gain uh, you need to hit into the block to kind of gain power there and then you know fire off a special by kind of like special intercepting with him when he's coming right at you or kind of get him right back against the wall and throw a heavy attack uh, let's have a look at some examples First up, I just want to show an example of a champion that doesn't have any external power gains. We got Domino without any Trinity here. Uh, so we're entering the first phase now, and we're going for those blocked hits so we can get up to the special three. Uh, during the first 5%, you want to make sure that you don't use any special attacks at all, just so that you're ready with like a special or very, very close to an SB3 just so you can fire it off to get rid of his primeval cocoon. Uh, but one of the things that you want to pay attention to is ideally you want to use a special attack very, very shortly after he's used his special attack. Uh, that way you can kind of have maximum uptime on the period where he doesn't have primeval cocoon and it allows you to get, you know, a lot more damage in. So it's something to uh, try and aspire to when you can. Now to show you another option that isn't the very overpowered domino man, this is guillotine. So this is kind of the special intercept tactic uh, that you can use with pretty much any champion as well very very bog standard one so you want to fire off those special intercepts again ideally just after he has used a, uh, a special attack for kind of maximum downtime uh, on the primeval cocoon just so you can get plenty of hits in there uh, so yeah this one I think we managed to get in about 10 hits every single time he uses it also one additional tip as well if you don't want him to use the special one with certain champions you kind of can hold block and sometimes he won't throw the special one but will for a heavy attack instead so for certain champions and matchups if they've got good block proficiency uh, that's a way to kind of get even more downtime on primeval cocoon there so yeah you can see we went straight into block man and got another round of combo there so we could get up to a bar of power so now we're ready like after he uses this to intercept with a special one he charges at us we intercept with another special one and you know it's just really all about getting into the pattern if you don't have a champion with power gain speaking of power Power gain champions Hyperion is probably one of the best options overall for this brand new Thanos boss uh, you want to save up to the special three 
as soon as he enters phase one, and then you can immediately fire off the SB3, kind of remove Primeval Cocoon, and then for the most part on this phase, you want to try and special two spam. Any champions with guaranteed stun like Hyperion and also Hulk are so, so valuable uh, in the first 60% of the fight, because you can just keep on stunning and chaining on like OG Hulk, man, if you got a very stacked version of him, uh, can work wonders as well. But Hyperion is just an absolute beast. You can tank through this first phase so quickly. It's also worth noting how valuable Carnage is for this fight as well. You probably saw some gameplay at the beginning, but in phase one, he has increased power gain and also unblockable special attacks as well. Uh, so it just makes it kind of very easy to like constantly go in it, especially if you're playing very aggressively as well. You can like whack Thanos while he's standing up and just tear this lad apart, man. Like Carnage is honestly so good for this fight. And as you saw at the beginning, if you complete all the Proxima missions in the first 5% while nothing's happening, you can just completely ignore this phase by using a special 3 as soon as it begins. Uh, it's a really, really cheesy tactic, man, but it's very, very fun. And Proxima Midnight, if you can survive for the whole fight, is very, very good in the final phase. There's actually been some Proxima Midnight one-shots recorded already. So yeah, if you got a stacked out Proxima, man, uh, you might be in luck. It's also worth noting that you can get heavy attacks during this first phase if you're right against the wall and he either uses a special one uh, or fires off a heavy attack. You've just got to evade both parts of it. For certain champions with very quick heavies, you can just evade the first part of it and then dash in. But in order to be safe with a few characters, if you evade both parts, uh, you've just got a, a very long recovery period. So it allows you to get a very safe heavy attack there against the wall. Uh, but again, because of proximity and distance, you will want to make sure you're against the wall in order for this one to work. It does take a little bit of practice, but if you're using like Captain America Infinity War, it is a pretty damn good tactic. So that is it for phase one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on now to phase two. Now, at first, when it comes to the second phase, it's going to seem a little bit chaotic. But once you get used to this phase, it's actually one of the easier ones to deal with. But, you know, there are some uh, some tricks going on here that you do need to get a little bit used to. Uh, so the first thing is this special two. He's going to fire six projectiles, but only two of them are real. So it's kind of the sparkly, like, uh, orangey yellow ones, which we'll talk about and highlight when it comes to the gameplay there. Uh, also, it's worth noting in this phase, he has a passive safeguard, so he can't take more than 0.5% of his max health and damage, which is about 2,700 or so from a single hit there. Um, and that's important to... Um, uh, bear in mind for this phase because it makes damage over time champions bleeders a lot more valuable so something to uh, keep in mind for phase two there also at the start of this phase and whenever he uses his special two your controls are going to be inverted and you're going to gain a debuff and the only way to kind of remove this control inversion is to end a light combo ender uh, so this can actually be quite straightforward to deal with at the start of the phase and once you get used to kind of dodging the special two and the inverse controls it's fairly easy to shrug off as well uh, but again it does take a little bit of practice this phase uh, also it's worth noting while the attacker's controls are inverted Thanos's attacks cannot miss so Ghost isn't going to work there he receives true strike as well so Stark and Aunt Spider-Man's auto evade isn't going to work and also additional attack rating as well so if you do get hit man uh, it's definitely going to hurt but also while the attacker's controls are inverted the attacker increases their attack by 50% of their base attack rating uh, and this is is all right man but it doesn't really like matter too much because there is safeguard on this as well so you can't hit more than 2.7k but again for damage over time champions it can add like a little bit more damage there so for the sake of this phase we're going to refer to dashing backwards aka dexterity as dodge and dashing toward thanos as dash now the biggest tip when you enter this phase is you want to dodge immediately and that will dash you toward thanos because of the inverted controls right at the start and then doing kind of a, a medium quadruple light combo with the ender there is going to get rid of your inverted controls right at the start so yeah whenever you enter this phase or if you die and enter this phase again like straight off the bat you can use this tip and this is really going to allow you to kind of get into this phase and take control of it so you can see doing that at the start allows you a lot of time to really nuke into thanos and get that damage and also above 40 percent he can be stunned so you know don't worry about uh, any stun reflect because the mechanics from the previous phase uh 
that are not applicable. So let's have a look at the special two, and that's the main challenge for this phase. So only two of them are going to be lit up and shiny. However, the two that are lit up and shiny uh, are always different. So that's something to uh, to keep in mind as well, but they're always going to be at the same point in the chain. So it's either going to be both of the first ones, both of the second ones, or both of the third ones. So with these, you really do need to adapt your timing on the fly, but it's, uh, it's not too bad once you get used to them and the inverted controls. Now, let's have a look in slow motion so as soon as he has two bars of power he's probably going to throw it quite quickly there so you want to dodge back and then you want to dash the initial beam because you've got inverted controls dash again to get right back and then you're looking for the orbs that are lit up coming at you you want to dash to avoid the first one dash to avoid the second one and then you want to dodge straight away uh, to go back into Thanos then you've got to make sure you five combo to remove the inverted controls with a light ending attack so so medium, quadruple light, and you're back to square one. So let's have a look at another special two, this time using Carnage as an example. So we fire off a special one. He's got two bars of power. I know he's almost guaranteed to use a special two after this. So as soon as Carnage lands, we're going to dodge right back to create some distance initially. And then we're going to dash toward him because our controls are inverted now. And then we're waiting to identify which projectiles are the real ones. So it's the middle one. We dash to dodge. We dash again to dodge. And then we dodge to go in and dash toward Thanos there. Again, inverted controls, uh, they do take a little bit of getting used to. But once you're there, boys, you are good to go. At its core, phase two is all about dealing with the inverted controls and evading that special too, and it does take a bit of practice, lads. You know, it's not something that most people can expect to go straight into uh, and absolutely master it, but also as an additional note, for the first 60% up until 40%, you can stun Thanos. So there's a lot of value in bringing champions like Blade, OG Hulk, Hyperion, but as soon as he hits 40%, he will become completely unstunnable. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on because you are more reliant on kind of playing with the inverted controls uh, and evading that special too, especially to get him from like 40% uh, all the way down to 30% and enter the final phase, uh, which is where all of the, the fun at times begin, ladies and gentlemen. And now we've got the super fun third and final phase, which again is very frustrating, man. By far the worst phase uh, for pretty much everybody, at least in my opinion. So as soon as he enters this phase and whenever he uses his special three he's going to gain an unstoppable buff for five seconds and also go indestructible as well and he is permanently indestructible during this phase and the only way that you can get rid of the indestructible is by transferring his armor break debuffs on you which he's going to apply every one second uh, to Thanos and then it's going to give you a one second interval to deal damage so yeah basically this last phase is all about survivability you need a champion that can with stand um uh, kind of multiple special threes so that you can build up the stacks of armor break to somewhere you know like 15 or above and then your special threes are going to hit very very hard so to get this phase done you ideally need some sturdy champions that can survive multiple special threes so any member of the avengers so any champion with the avengers tag and it's always good to look because certain champions like captain marvel and stark and aunt spider-man because they're based on the movie when those champions weren't in the avengers uh, aren't in the avengers so uh keep an eye out we'll cover some of the top avengers as well but make sure you know if you're bringing in a champion that you think is an avenger you make sure they've got Got the Avengers tag. So members of the Avengers won't lose more than 15% of their max health when hit by the special attack. So Avengers can tank multiple special threes, man. Very, very effective there. And also when intercepting Thanos's dash attack as well, for any champion that isn't an Avenger, the opponent gains safeguard, preventing them from losing more than 20% of their max health the next time they get hit. Although with the unstoppable, this does eat into the time that you've got to have an intercept. So it can be a little bit tricky. So so it's not really a safe idea to use um uh, really any champion that isn't an Avenger, unless you've maybe got Heimdall in the team as well, and Heimdall is an absolute MVP champion to bring, because he just allows you one more life and one more special three on all of your champions, and that could be the difference between, like, no damage and a massive burst of damage with the special three. Uh, so Heimdall, very, very valuable for this final phase. It's also important to remember that there is a constant armor break on you, so champions like Ghost, Iceman, and Killmonger that are 
are gimped by armor breaks because Ghost can't phase. Iceman is going to have his armor shattered and Killmonger, uh, I don't believe, can activate his indestructible charges if he doesn't have his vibranium armor. So none of those champions can tank the special three. Uh, but Gwenpool works really, really effectively. I imagine Luke Cage might be all right as well, but you're not going to get every special three with his. Uh, but, you know, just keep in mind the armor break before you go into this fight. Now, let's have a bit of a look at how this phase works. So, just as a reminder, man, this is probably one of the most skill-intensive requirements we have ever had for a monthly event quest, because if you cannot intercept, if you cannot dodge really, really well, you're not going to be able to get any damage in. So, it's very, very tricky, and don't beat yourself down if you do get ruined to this lad. Again, you got like six weeks to try and get good and improve on this boy, and just kind of keep that in mind, lads. So again, any champion with the actual Avengers tag cannot take more than 15% damage from Thanos' special three. Uh, so yeah, it just makes it a really easy time. There's not as much pressure to kind of intercept every single round, uh, but where you can, you want to try and kind of bosh out those intercepts where you do get the interval. We managed to crack out a pretty nice intercept there. We fire off a special three, so that gives us uh, a fair bit of damage, man. You need to be very, very quick on it, man, because you have such a short window where the armor breaks actually on Thanos and he takes damage so literally you've got like one second man to get your intercept and fire off that sp3 but in terms of like power generation in this final phase again if you've got an avenger you can be smacked about a fair bit from that special three and that's going to give you like 25 percent power or like just over that every time you get hit with one uh, so if you're playing an avenger you're you know slowly going up and up in power just from getting smacked by the special three but also if you can intercept as well that's going to allow you to kind of fuel your power up even more to the special three so yeah it's a pretty good time but as you can see those armor break stacks even when they transfer they don't dissipate so they just keep on stacking up and up but you do need to be aware that the armor break stacks are on you as well permanently so if you do take a block tier or parry you are going to take a lot of damage so it's something to uh, uh keep in mind especially when you're above 15 like any blocked hits are really really gonna hurt but as you can see, like Avengers just allow you to tank so many special threes so you can really get those stacks up. We are up to 19 stacks now. We're just trying to get an intercept. We crack out a nice one, uh, 20 stacks of armor break. Quick on the ball as well. We connect with a special three there, firing off Hawkeye's arrows, man. Seeing that super badass special three there and taking him down by 8%. So that was a 45,000 special three with Hawkeye. And for a rank four, man, without any boost that's uh, pretty good but again boosts are available and if you do need them man they're pretty good to use now, just to showcase a few more options within the Avengers tag, and then we'll showcase a little bit of Gwenpool gameplay as well in this final phase. But just to show you, man, again, once you get those armor breaks stacked up, your damage is just going to go up and up and up. So even champions like Hulkbuster have the ability to survive many, many special threes, get a big old stack of armor break, and then, you know, do their part in the fight against Thanos there. So 23 stacks of armor break, we fire off the special three here, and it's, uh, it's glorious ladies and gentlemen it's absolutely glorious and you know that dealt uh 35k damage which you know in all fairness is not the absolute uh, largest amount of damage we've ever seen but nevertheless it was still some damage there ladies and gentlemen uh, also a really great option as well as hulk ragnarok just because you have like additional health when this champion uh, goes below 20 percent and you get the regeneration and this is absolutely insane for allowing you to survive like a few more special threes as well you can see that regeneration man is just kind of taking us up and up and up so yeah hulk ragnarok can be a really really good option for this final phase man because he can survive a very very long time uh, and get in multiple special threes especially when awakened so he's uh, a pretty interesting choice as well one of the top options for this phase is definitely captain america infinity war however you want to be careful that you don't have a skill champion in the team if he's awakened because then he's going to like continually shrug off the armor breaks uh so yeah just make sure you've got like no skill champions in the team uh, if you are going with an awakened Captain America Infinity War. Another great option is OG Hulk. OG Hulk and OG Thor hit very, very hard, and especially if you've got the Thor Ragnarok synergies as well as Heimdall, there's a lot of cheat death on this lad, so he can be very useful. Then just to showcase another really, really good option, man, we've got Gwenpool. So if your evades are on point, you're going to be having such a great time with Gwenpool because uh, she cannot die from special three attacks. Uh, so yeah, that's absolutely mad, man. You can't die from the special 
three. You're going to be on the very, very low health toward the end of the fight. But especially with the Heimdall synergy, you know, get a little bit of additional cheat death as well. Gwenpool is a tremendously effective option, man. She works really, really well for this final phase. But you do need her awakened ability in order to access this. So on the provision, you've got Gwenpool awakened, man. You're going to be having a very, very good time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the Thanos Uncollected Guide. I understand it has been a little bit of a long one today. Uh, but, you know, this fight did need a pretty extensive breakdown. But hopefully today's video has helped you understand this new boss a little bit more in detail and given you the knowledge to absolutely shred this lad. So yeah, if this video did help you out, please do smash that like button. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you know Alliance members that are going to benefit from this video, please do share it with them. But aside from that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day.